Well, good morning again. This is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society. And uh, we're going to talk about another TMJ case number five in a row here. And I'm trying to show you that things can happen to people and the pain will be caused by a blow to the jaw some way or another and it hits this retrodiscal tissue and it's in the back of the fossa and it drives it real hard and it damages it and it swells up and gets inflamed and now every time you swallow the condyle pushes into this tissue and you have pain with it. Some of it is very severe Others is not, not so severe. And a lot of times the thing that caused it, uh, you know, it'll get over it by itself without anything. And you could take something to keep it the inflammatory uh, medicine, or you can put cold packs on something if you get hit in the jaw and it jams that and keep it from swelling up. And once it swells this tissue, then you're condyle hits that every time you swallow. In other words, when I just swallow like that, you bite together if you've got an adult swallow pattern, and nearly everybody does, and you, this happens just all the time. And now this keeps doing this, and it keeps it aggravated, and you can take all kinds of medicine and everything else, but if you don't get to the cause of it, it still will come back, you see. So I want to try to impress on you these things that happen like uh, car accidents and things or somebody banging you in the jaw, a little niece got hit in the jaw with an elbow, somebody playing, uh, playing f uh, a ball, you know, things. Anything that you do that you can get uh, pressure on it and anything that a dentist makes or puts anything, it hits and it pushes the jaw back in the distal direction, they can have this type of problem. So uh, I want to get into this case. This lady worked for, actually worked in the office for several years and uh, we uh, worked on her. I didn't do the case like I normally do. I, I don't have the starting models of the case, but I'll show you why her case was bothering and she realized that and wanted us to come in there and, and uh, correct the case. So we started the case without every bit of uh, information that we normally would take on, uh, take on a person. But she's a very efficient uh, lady who worked there in office and we used one of these fancy headgears, it has this band around your head up here, and uh, this allows us to pull the maxillary teeth forward, the upper teeth forward, and now that lets the jaw come forward and hit in a different place. In other words, if you can move your foot, the upper teeth in this direction, and now that the lower teeth will come up and go there almost on its own. I've had cases actually come up and get even toward class three. So we put this in and so this uh, gadget right here is pulling the teeth and you want to put it to where uh, the elastics coming through here is right when the lips close together. Don't put the elastics where the pulling down or up like this, and we're trying to, to drag the upper teeth in a forward direction when we do this. Now this pivots, in other words, this would be pulling out, it'll be going back this direction. It kind of pivots off of the cheeks here, and then this strap around the head, and we keep away from the lower jaw. Now on some people who have real tough joints back here and it, it doesn't bother them as much. You can pull with class three elastics from here to the upper and pull the upper teeth by pushing back on the lower teeth. 
there are a few people you can't wear those class three elastics uh, during the night time because you relax and they push your lower jaw back and shove the condyle into the fossa uh, and, and damages this retrodiscal tissue. Uh, it's, uh, it's something you just have to work with a few of these cases and you find out what you have to do to get rid of this pain. And so here we use this. It, it had no effect on the lower arch at all. And so that allows us to move this out and then the teeth would follow in. And so we lined the case teeth up and got them fitting together good and it worked out great. So I'm gonna run through this as uh, fast as we can. This is a odd head gear, and I don't really like them too much because they put a lot of pressure on the, uh, the sinus area right here under the eye, and that a lot of times gets sore right there, and you can't put a great deal of pressure to, to bring the maxillary teeth forward. And that's all you need to do is just advance the upper teeth and it, it'll pull the condyle out of the fossa and then you, you have it made then. Now this is uh, rigged up and that you can see this. If you need to get in here, we've got, a, I think, a couple of cases like this that we showed. Uh, so we'll go through this. And so we're pulling the upper teeth in a forward direction and the lower teeth will follow it and the now back at the back of the mouth you, you, you've got you've got this uh, fossil like this and the condyle is going too far back in this area and bashing this tissue and you're pulling it out and you want to reposition this condyle further out in this area and that's that's basically what you do. You get rid of this pressure because that's pushing on that every time they swallow right there. All right, let's get on with this. Uh, <clears throat> this is, uh, we use these little bitty brackets and we have a big inner bracket space and we're working in. And on a lot of these adults, we bring the cases down further so you don't even see the lower brackets while you're doing this and the upper uh, small brackets you know they don't show quite as bad as the full banded case and all that and its brackets are far far better than than uh, bands on the teeth so anyway we talk about that in other cases so we'll, we're moving that out and we'll coordinate the two arches. In other words, we'll make the bottom arch fit underneath the upper arch so that the upper teeth, like you, if you've got an upper molar or something like this, you want the lower molar to be this way. Now that keeps you from biting your cheek. Now I'm a mouth breather and my tongue fits in back in here and it pushes these teeth out and now my teeth hit like that and I bite my cheeks frequently when I'm uh, trying to eat. Sometimes I have to get some food out of this side of the mouth to keep the cheek out from under that gap. But that's just one of the problems with that. All right, here we're working on this. She's got a little tori right here that didn't seem to bother anything, so we left it alone, but you can <clears throat> go in and scrape. There's a benign bone tumor that uh, grows and I've got some on my mouth and I took some off my father's uh, mouth years ago back when I was in dental school. All right, now these elastics coming off of this thing, you want them to pass right through the space as the lips come together. You don't want to push it up or down. That'll make the saliva come out and it, it leaks and dries up and it's a mess. So you try to keep that there. So you put a little hook in this and you've got this arch wire tied back 
and you're pulling this whole thing in a forward direction, and the, the thing that that lets this lower jaw, which wants to come forward anyway, yeah, it can come forward, and the inner digitation works better as it comes out. Now that's uh, moving the side teeth from one side to the other a little bit. And uh, we've got this going. I'm able to run through these, and we run this down. You drop these teeth down here, and you don't actually see these on it. You don't see this at all. If you put the brackets way up here, you see a lot of And you can put the bracket where you want to just so you keep the inside of the edge of the teeth going in that direction. All right, let's see. Now this is 93, and we're pulling this up now. <coughs> the upper teeth, we will go ahead and coordinate the arches. In other words, get the lower teeth to fit into this with the upper teeth out above, out away from the lower teeth so you don't bite. And this is her facial structure. Of course, she had a good facial structure. We didn't need to change that much of, of anything right here. And there's a, kind of a semi-smile. And there the teeth are. And she has a very good smile with very little uh, gum tissue showing right there. And here the teeth are after we've uh, finished this. And the lower jaw now is further forward and the TMJ problem just goes away when you do that. If you get at the real cause of it, but there are a lot of people have things happen in the front part of the mouth here, the chin, they're sitting on it, or resting the hand on it, doing, just sleeping like this. Or, you can create a TMJ problem that way. And everybody working on teeth ought to know something about the TMJ. What do you think? Well, you know, uh, many people don't understand it. They just, I don't know why they don't. It's not that complicated a thing uh, to understand and you can advance the mandible in other words, to advance this on many, many cases and the lower jaw will fall it, or you can pull it out to that place and that gets the condyle out away from it. And it, this has finished up the case. It's a real nice case. And uh, this lady worked for me for several years. And we didn't take a lot of records on it. like. We do, but we bonded a three to three down here to hold this back, and this is bonded these teeth. She took care of the teeth very well, and this is 1994, and it didn't take all that long to do this. Now here's some more uh, pictures of her teeth, and this is 04. In other words, this back here was 94. We had it there. And here we are 10 years later in uh, 2004. The teeth are still there. They stayed in that position. And we had a retainer. She wore that some. So this is 2004. That's 10 years after we finished the case. And it's holding up great. And I hope you learn about this. And this is just the facial structure there. And I thank you for watching. I hope you join our group and subscribe to our channel. And these are, I just showed five TMJ cases in women, hoping that this lady in California can go over these and figure out what's causing her problem. I'm unable to work on anybody. I have, I'm over, I've been retired now for about seven years and I'm doing these TMJ videos. So people, in fact, are doing all kinds of just covered orthodontics completely. And we're next
I think we're going to do something on restorative dentistry. So we have pediatric dentists, they need to learn to do orthodontics. The general dentist, if you are inclined that way, you can learn to do that. You can come to the American Orthodontic Society. It's in Grapevine, Texas. We have a new facility uh, work where we can see people and do things right in our own deal around the hotels. It's easy to get there from almost any city in the United States. You can be there in about a couple of hours uh, flying and the hotels will pick you up at the airport and bring you out to the meeting place. So we're pushing the American Orthodontic Society and this new building we're in, it is just really fancy and, and it looks great. And I want you to come into that. We have uh, instructors that know how to tell you how to do these things and how to do this. So we'll close this out and I hope you'll join our group and I'm going to close uh, sign out. Thank you. Anna.